Hi and welcome to Little Bits Honey Bees. I'm Skinny Bee Man here. Um, this is uh, going to be a talk on drones. A lot of people doesn't um, give drones all the credit they deserve. Uh, this comes from a subscriber of mine that uh, wanted to hear about drones. I ask everybody about uh, uh, videos and uh, definitely if you got a suggestion on a video uh, let me know and I'll try to make it not always but I'll try okay as a drone you know it's a male in the hive it comes from an unfertilized egg a drone only has 16 chromosomes whereas a queen bee has 32 and workers have 32 all the girls um, a little bit of thing on the uh, life cycle. Uh, a queen takes 16 days to hatch from an egg. A worker takes 21 days. And a drone takes 28 days. A queen bee is matures in about 19, 18, 20 days, uh, how long it takes from the time the egg was laid, that's uh, when she's mature. A drone, from the time the egg's laid till he matures, takes about 38 to 40 days. So you got to have drones before you're thinking about, you know, making queens, uh, queen cells. Another thing on uh, drones, you know, of course the drones, you know what they look like, and the cells are bigger. A lot of people think that the reason that the mites congregate in drone cells is because they're bigger size. That's not the case. The cells are bigger, but the drones are bigger. They still fill up the same amount of space. The reason the mites go to the drone cell is because the gestation period on the drones are seven days longer. They can theoretically lay two to three more eggs in there and raise a bigger family. That's why they like the, dr the drones. Yeah, a lot of people think that uh, the only job that a uh, drone has is mating. That's his primary role, but in the sum uh, summer or winter time, if they're still around in the winter, they throw a lot of them out. <clears throat> they will actually uh, vibrate and make heat or fan just like a um, worker bee to cool the hive off or heat it up. So they, they do have a little other minority function in the hive other than that. When a drone hatches, they can't feed yourself. The, the nurse bees feed them for oh five to seven days and then they can feed theirself honey. But the drones doesn't have the right enzymes in his body to metabolize the pollen if they need protein. So if he needs protein, he's got to be fed that regurgitated from a nurse bee so he can get the pollen, to, the, the protein that he needs. He can eat the honey just fine, get the carbohydrates, but not the pollen. Um, so after that, he can feed. When he comes back after a mating flight, they uh, sometimes they're so wore out that they have to be fed for the first few minutes to get his strength back up to be able to eat again when they come in. But anyway, we go through all that ritual. A uh, drone, they fly out to a congregation area, and uh, it's something nature's designated there everywhere and they say they're in the same place all the time and he'll make one to five flights a day and they usually average a, a flight on a made or a drone flight is 25 to 32 minutes and hopefully they find a, a you know a virgin queen in the mating yard and they have a chance to mate but the odds of him mating are very slim. One out of a thousand drones actually get to mate. That's, that's about the average, or so they say. I don't, have, I don't know how they prove that, but that's what, that's what the figures are. One in a thousand. 
uh, it come and he just keeps coming back if he don't get mated. Average <clears throat> lifespan on a drone is 90 days. Is average. He'll fly out and mate with a queen. And when he actually attaches himself to a queen, the force of his ejaculation is so forceful that it'll it'll shoot him off the queen. Sometimes they leave a little bulbous thing in there that uh, the next drone uh can mate without any problem with that being in there. Uh, uh, the actual mating of a queen usually takes less than two seconds, can be as long as five seconds. So a queen mates with uh, 15 drones, say, you know, in a matter of one minute, she's mated with all the drones she needs to mate with. Now, I have some, had, had some queens, and I can verify personally that go out more than once for a mating flight. I seen one had one queen here in the yard that <clears throat> she was a mark queen and just so happened I went by every day that she was coming back in and seen her. And she went out three times for a mating flight. So the one time deal is not always so. It, they can fly out more than that to get mated. <clears throat> but typically this is a little bit on the queen side here, but typically a queen, a virgin queen comes out of the box, she will fly four to six feet above the ground until one or two things happen. Until there's an obstacle she's got to go up over or she gets past the smell, the pheromone smell of her worker bees out gathering forage. That makes, makes sure she's out past uh, where she'd be mating with her drones. And then she flies straight up. And typically straight up, uh, she starts attracting uh, drones immediately. They usually mate roughly 120 feet off the ground. And now, so that's something to think about on a mating yard. If you live in a place where it's all fields and they can fly a long way, you kind of got to manage the yard a little better because the drone placement, your drone colony has got to be placed at different areas around the mating yard. Here I'm fortunate enough, my, bee yard, my mating yard is surrounded by monstrous trees. It's a little field with uh, 120 foot trees are tall around it. So my queens have got to come right up as soon as they leave the yard. So therefore they get mostly mated with my my drones. That, that's a advantage. But if you're living in a big area where you want to pretty well assure that your uh, queens are getting mated with your drones, you need to set a, a drone colonies uh, at an interval about a third of a mile away from it in a triangular shape. And that's pretty good coverage of your mating yard. If you really want to get secure that they're just mating with the drones that you're selecting, you would rotate that circle 30 degrees and put the other triangle in between the other triangle at a half mile out. And then that pretty well assures that most of the mating is with your drones. Um, a lot of people think uh, in making queens, the queen's the most important thing. I'm underneath, I'm a, from a different group, let's put it this way. The drones are, only carry 16 chromosomes. So, this one here, you guys have to think about this one a little bit. A drone has no father and no sons. You've got granddaughters and grandparents. You, when, you, when a drone just ha is a clone of the queen, so when you mate with that drone, it goes back to the genetics of the grandparents. It skips back two generations. skips the queen generation. Anything she's added to the mix. 
so it jumps back one. So if you had a pure, if you're running uh, purebred breeders, the drones are very important. You can take it and, and, and flood your yard like I was talking about with drones from that breeder queen and change 90% of your yard over in just a short amount of time, in a matter of a season's time. Whereas queens, you raise an individual, takes forever. They both have their purpose, but you can get a lot more out of the drones than you can the queens. That's very important. I mean, you can do go look at research studies with the USDA and Jeff Harris and Adam Finkelstein and Harbo, Dr. Harbo, and all of them, and the drones is. Is the t is the main source. But that's basically the the ins and outs of a drone. So if you want to change your uh, actual bloodline in your in your yard, concentrate on raising big drone colonies out of the queens that you really like. That will help you more than raising daughter queens out of out of that breed. There's a lot to raising queens and raising in good queens, and it, you just gotta kind of play around the edges. But the drones have a very, very important part in it, and of course the drones, <clears throat> the drones is always the first one to go too. In the summertime, when there's a dearth on, they will quit laying drone eggs. And if it stays on a little longer, they'll pull all the drone larvae out, cannibalize them, or dump them outside the hive. And then if the drought stays on for a long time, they'll actually throw the drones out. They can throw them out midsummer. They don't have to be in the fall. They throw them out midsummer. If they're taking, it takes a lot of resources to raise drones. It's a, it's a real tax on the colony. You put a drone comb frame in there, and you keep that one drone. You got to rotate two of them, but you keep where there's a full drone comb in a hive all the time. It's about all the hive can do. They won't maybe not grow a whole lot because it just it just taxes a hive terrible. So you got really got to feed your drone colonies really well. You especially got to be really vigilant on the mites because, as we know. Mites like uh, drone comb, and if you're raising tens of thousands of drones, uh, you're just making a breeding factor for mites. So you really got to monitor your mites in your drone colonies. You got to be more vigilant than you do in a regular colony. <clears throat> so anyway, that's pretty well the ins and out of a drone. I probably left some things out, but uh, if you have any questions, make them in the comments and. Uh, Hope you learned something. Uh, if I don't get back to making another video for the, before the Christmas holidays, I uh, wish you guys a Merry Christmas and uh, hopefully have a good winter on your bees. Uh, I am selling, uh, opening the sales up for queens, nukes, and uh, packages. They're on my website, littlebitshoneybees.com. Uh, you need to order quick because I, I, I get. <laughs> That's what I'm sitting here doing today, is putting orders in the database, and <laughs> we're getting filled up pretty quick. So, if you if you think you might want a queen, I'm not taking any money now. It'll be after the first year before I take any deposits on anything. But you need to get your order in if you if you're thinking about it. Go on there and fill out an online order form. I'll see what I can do about taking care of you. If you like the videos, hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it, and you get notified when I put a new video out. Had a lot of positive feedback on the question and answer the other night. I'm working with some other guys uh, about doing a question and answer where you actually get on, you can log in and everybody will be on the camera and you can ask it in person. I don't have to read something. I think it would be a better format. I'm looking into it. I've got, I've got guys like Jason Braggs and New River Honey Bees and Langford Parton, uh, Woolly Bees Apiary, and Todd Prince from uh, NC Queen Bees, uh, Barnyard Bees, 
he hadn't got back to me yet, but he's pretty good friends. Let's see if we can get them all on there and get some opinions and and see how that'll go. I'm working on it. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Bye.